So this morning um, we're not deer stalking, we're, uh, we're out in the woods doing our jobs, maintenance uh, and preparing for the winter cull. Um, so I'm going to be putting out food into my feed bins now, um, checking my high seats uh, for security to make sure they've not been damaged and um, looking at shooting lines um, and trimming branches on uh, lines of sight and um, generally checking around the woods um, to make sure that um, uh, nothing's changed from uh, the spring when we were last here. Um, it's very important work, it's not always about the stalking, it's, um, it's about getting everything right and ready and generally if you're prepared you're successful. Look at this place here, I love it through here. So nice now. working in the woods and uh, just discovered this. I um, haven't seen this before, but uh, it's obviously a big palmated buck. He's decided to, when he's coming off the fields, mark his uh, territory and uh, you can see where the flats of his uh, um, antlers have marked and he must come here very regularly. This wasn't here two weeks ago, so uh, yeah, always looking. Really important. I'm just checking my high seats, start of the cool season, um, to make sure that they've not been uh, vandalised. A lot of our seats get vandalised, unfortunately, by uh, the public that have uh, the wrong opinion of what we do. But uh, uh, this one looks onto a, a little valley um, where uh, where we discreetly feed, and uh, we can assess what we've got, and then. Uh, implement our call as we uh, as we see fit I've just um, put out some more minerals this is in a new position um, I've got a real good track between the field edge coming up into some thick cover there uh, and uh, you can't see it but there's lots of pathways that fallow deer use, roe deer and the muntjac and I've put this in uh, to benefit them um, which is over uh, the winter, uh, it's a mineral feed lick and uh, this gives them vital um, additional minerals uh, which they uh, uh, look for and um, on this area then I'll put a trail camera in the end once they start using it and I'll be able to assess what we've got. So the mineral block's got a hole in the middle and all I've done is screw in some Sheridai screws. Uh, they, they won't rot then and uh, I can take the screws out as I need them rather than nails that are a little bit harder to get out. So I've put two screws in that's approximately the same and they'll just stop the fallow deer pushing it off. And uh, I think this will be used within the week. As soon as they find it, they absolutely love it. This is better than actually feeding in my opinion um, to have minerals out and, and I put them out I probably use 20, 20 blocks a year throughout my areas so um, very useful and very beneficial to the wild deer herd. Hey Lola do you agree? Come on then always a job I'm just clearing away to my high seat. Uh, it's autumn and all the leaves are dropping and uh, the paths to get into the seats uh, can be very noisy with 
with the noise of leaves. <clears throat> so uh, I always try and make the last 20, 30 meters approach into the seat uh, a clear path. And I'm get, getting quietly in the, in the dark uh, half an hour before it breaks light. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to feed I go. Just setting up another trail camera. Um, it's no secret I use these a lot for a reconnaissance. In the old days, we used to sit out in high seats for hours looking at deer, doing our recon. It's so handy and so useful and has no disturbance at all to the deer. Um, most of the new modern cameras have got black light, so there's no disturbance at all to them. They're not even aware that they're there, and we get some absolutely amazing footage back that we can assess and look at what we've got, whether it's for a trophy animal or, or uh, a cool situation of what we've got coming or even for seeing injured deer, uh, wounded and injured deer. Uh, they crop up on our cameras very regularly. Um, so my standard method is I either tie wrap it or strap it to the, uh, to the, to the tree. Um, if it's for muntjac, row, fallow, it's generally knee height uh, to the camera lens uh, and set it up in an area um, where you get some traffic uh, which can be on a, a a path, a deer path, or um, on a mineral lick or a feed site. The only problem with putting it on a feed site, uh, if it's uh, an area that's keepered, is you get a lot of pheasants and a lot of false triggers on your camera trap. So uh, um, if you are going to put it in that kind of area and put food down, I suggest you put it behind the camera and then you get the animals passing the camera on the way to it. Uh, another tip is, um, certainly in the, uh, in the summer and that, is actually break down a branch um, if, if you've got a good browse line and you can see what the deer are liking to feed on, is snap the branch down um, into a, a height where they can feed on it and put a camera on that and you get them naturally feeding on it. And uh, fallow deer, if you break a branch down in an area where you've got a lot of fallow deer, they'll be on it the next day uh, and you can see what's about. So this one, oh, it's pointing down slightly, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of stick balance it up and get it in line with that mineral lick because I know we've got a, a nice fallow book here and uh, after the rut he'll want to uh, replenish himself and uh, you, you see a lot more of the books paying attention to the mineral lick after the rut um, as they try and re uh, get back their uh, condition. Pretty discreet anyway. 